I have to say that uh, Council today was really remarkable in the amount of he said, she said, they said that was going on. And uh, they were talking about going back to minutes of meetings. Well, I mean, I happen to know when you compare the video of the Council uh, and, and even General Committee um, meetings, the, the video that I shoot, and then you compare it to what actually makes it in the minutes. We're talking about creative writing here. And uh, that's a problem that is systemic here at the city of Mississauga. Um, and what they write down is, is essentially manicured message of the corporation. And that's pretty well anybody who's uh, required to write a report of some kind. And uh, what uh, was particularly fascinating was reference to what happened um, at uh, various in-camera meetings. Now, in-camera meetings are closed secret meetings. Um, really away from the public. In fact, the word in camera means exactly the opposite. Uh, they go off into a special uh, room up there, I guess it's on the third floor, and then away from the public. We don't know what they're talking about in there. And there seems to be, no, not seems to be, certainly, um, there is considerable debate as to what it is that they actually said in behind closed doors. And it's left me to wonder, surely the in-camera meetings aren't limited to somebody taking notes. Because City of Mississauga is not good at taking notes. You don't want them to take notes on you. Um, we're, we're, ta we're, we're in the new millennium, 2009 now. And we're witnessing an entity, indeed pretty well all municipalities, that they limit their, the minutes of their meetings to what someone chooses to write down and record. And just from my own experience and research in two years of freedom of information documents, to be able to tell the difference between what they say publicly and what the reality shows, um, you know, they, they do privately. Excuse me, telephone. So where was I? Right. We're in a new millennium where the kind of camera that I'm using right now to record this has seven hours of recording time. We have digital audio recorders that can record for days. And yet we're, we're, we're limiting things to two minutes of meetings, or in other words, pen and quill technology. And the public is limited to what someone chooses to record. And in my own experience, and this is uh, 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 researching and, and securing uh, documents through freedom of information, it's often what they don't record that screws you over royally. And I'm just wondering when uh, the debate between, well, this was said and that was said and this was left out and no, 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 you don't have all the facts. What I don't understand is why they can't have on that computer screen, because I can do it at home. Go to my hard drive. I can go right now and, and find out what the March 11th uh, meeting said about Enersource or about... Uh, some cor corporate policy, or what bylaw what was passed and what wasn't. And I can't understand why we're limited to someone's view of what happened. That's why I'm recording this. Because I know the inventive, creative writing that goes on here. Because the uh, selective memory within these walls is obscene. It's obscene. And I, uh, just two weeks ago, I secured freedom of information on report writing for Mississauga Corporate Security. And it was a PDF file, and there were three documents. And while it didn't say directly that you should keep stuff out, it did warn the guards that anybody could secure or ask for their their records. And by the way, I do. And they also mentioned freedom of information as being one. 
So they don't want to write down something that doesn't advance the interests of the corporation. You know, I, and you've got Parrish and, and Adams saying one thing. You've got Mahoney saying something else. And, you know, let's hear it on here. Or better yet, on video. And I, I, really, I really think one of the things is 40, 50 years from now, because I, I think our democracy is being eroded something, uh, something horrible. Just we're allowing our governments to use technology unfettered, and that includes these frickin' video surveillance cameras, without any oversight. And they're using the sophisticated technology, and yet citizens 40, 50 years from now, when, they, when they're going to want to know how Mississauga came about, how, how it responded to the smart growth, how, how it got the transit system it developed. That's happening right here, right now. This is the history. And we're allowing, citizens are allowing the history of this city to be written by them. And, and it isn't just that. It's all Ontarians are allowing that to happen. Whether it's in Vaughan, in Whitby, in Ajax, in, in Brampton, in, in Oakville. All citizens in Ontario, and I'm going to use the word victimized, are being victimized by minutes of meetings as opposed to it being recorded and the actual video record of every council meeting, of every general meeting, of every audit committee meeting should be part of the record. And I know why it isn't. I know why it isn't, because a video record is cuts through the he said, she said, cuts through the selective reporting, or even the lies, because I, uh, The thing that happened today with Councillor Parrish and her, and her frustration, I can understand the frustration. I can understand what it's like to be stonewalled, to have delays, to be treated with disrespect, and by the way, being bullied, intimidated, threatened, and... I can understand her frustration. They're coming back, so let me record it this way. Let's add no video records of things and selective minutes, selective reporting as another route of youth violence.